Hello, Lorcan here. And in this video, I'm going to go through the other scenes I've made in this project that go over some of the things I think are just worth thinking about when uh, designing your player movement and considering how you're going to script it. So I've already seen the basic player, hopefully in the practical. The ones I'm going to go over is just thinking about the input calculations and accesses, different movement types for scripts, and for driven and direct movement. So I'm not sure those are the official names you to give these things, but that's what I'm sort of calling them for now. So I'll go into the, here's the first scene. So this is the first um, scene here, and you can see all these characters here move in different directions. You can see the very top, that shows you where, I'm using a joystick as usual, but if I use the, mass, if I use the uh, keyboard, still see it. And to go, Go over left to right, on the very left is what I usually do as camera driven movement. So the input is being translated from up, right, down, left, to the cameras up, down, right, left. And this is very good if you've got games with joystick inputs where you've got sort of a camera that might be moving a lot of the time like this. And so sort of you want to go for this kind of interface here. So there we go, going to the end of the course. The guy in the middle, you'd never actually, I think, see in a game that's just showing you what the input on calculated is like and just sort of exaggerating why it's important to do because it is what I'm managing to navigate now. If the camera was at a diagonal angle or anything, this would be very hard to navigate through the scene with, with the guy in the middle and off he pops. And the final guy is the guy on the far right. And this is why you see most of the uh, second years of my class do would be um, movement that's local to the player. So this one's actually harder to move by the joystick, but actually easier than the one on the far left with mouse and keyboard. So you set the rotation of the characters, left, right, just rotates him on the spot, forward makes him move forward, back makes him move back, so he's actually got reversing. And this one's actually, I find quite good, if you've not got the joystick available, this is probably better than the far left one for mouse and keyboard controls, just purely because it's very easy to sort of set a direction. <coughs> set a direction and keep going in it. So that's just kind of the things to think about. Like this is all for third person games in the moment, like first person and other kind of game camera views would affect which one of these would be the best way to go. But it is worth just, it's nice to have this here so you can actually just test out what do you think would suit the feel of your game better. The one on the left, which is like, if I try to move the guy on the left, it's actually harder to move him by the mouse and keyboard, but the guy on the right is much simpler. So it's just worth considering this stuff when you're scripting it and so there's not really much more I think I have to say on that one. So the next one is this scene here. And this scene just going through different ways to actually apply your movement onto a physical object in Unity. So the one on the far left the one is the one you've seen before, that is move position. The one in the middle is another ridge body, but it's using add force, which as you can see there, um, the way add force works is it takes a little bit longer to start. It actually has to accelerate up to its speed and then it has to actually slow down by the physics. So it's a little bit um, slow in response. There are ways to script around that. So I've done things where I um, disable and then re-enable its friction when the inputs are being given or not given. And some people prefer add force. Like I actually prefer add force because it's actually using kind of Unity's physics a bit more to push the object around but it's a little bit less sharp and responsive than move position. So it depends what kind of interface you want for your game, whether or not you want to use it. The final one is the character controller. And at the moment, you can see the left and the right, if I just reset them, they actually move speed slightly different, but they basically move the same way, except for the character controller's Unity's own thing that they've built specifically for certain types of players. So if I get to the steps now, you can see while the guy on the left can move up the steps, uh, he's just kind of brute forcing, pushing through while the character controller, you can actually set him to be able to go up steps of a certain height and be able to continually kind of set a limit and a height. So if I actually go down to the slope, while the one on the left will actually slowly go down, the character controller has been set to, oh, I can stand on the slope of this height. And if I go into here, so there we go, there's the character controller settings. And the character controller is actually quite good. Say if you were making a 
a first person shooter or a game where you just wanted the character to be able to go up steps, not worry about ledges or bricks or whatnot. The character control would be very good for that. The only thing to consider with the character controller, from my experience though, is it has been made by the folks at Unity for specific kinds of games. So, for example, the while the move position and which body can't automatically go upstairs because they've not been scripted to that by default, you could make something to do that if you had the uh, scripting know-how. And the nice thing about them is what you see is what you get. There aren't any limitations to them beyond what's given. While the character controller has some face set in stone limitations, for example, I found in games if you wanted to do a Mario Galaxy type thing where you actually have the character able to maybe walk on walls or around sort of circular planets, the character controller can't actually be rotated. If I go here, I mean this is the last one I used it and I think it's still the same way. If I go here and try to just spin him, that there's the character controller body and it won't actually, I think I've, there we go, it won't actually acknowledge that sort of rotation thing. So that's worth considering if you want to use the character controller. It's very good if you just want like basic movement or be very good for shooters as long as you don't have strange rotations and movement because you would automatically go up steps. First person games it can be very good for. But just when you're picking a system to script for, be aware of its experiment with it, prototype with it, and test out its extremes and try and be aware of any limitations that may pop up with it. So the final scene in my game, not oh, the colors are yellow now, I forgot that. But anyway, the final scene is just going through one small thing which I've decided to use cars because I think they illustrate this quite well. Um, this is when using things like move position and there we go, it's all working. So I'm just calling this forward driven and direct to movement. So the one on the far, light, far left is what we've seen so far and if you see the line path when I go straight right to left it's literally the same line in the same line in the ground it just immediately turns. The one in the middle however is scripted so um, he can only actually move forward. What's making him actually reorientate is his rotation. So he is rotating to the new spot and because of that he's actually got a limited turn circle. There's a minimum area he can turn around and you can set your rotation to make that more extreme. So if I went into his settings and actually if I get the direct 2 and set that to 2, you're going to see that the rotation has no effect on the way the one on the far left's moving. It does have an effect on the one on the far right's moving and for a racing game, you probably would want the forward-driven stuff. Surprising, you might actually want the far left if you've got, like, um, some platformers would use that. I think the... I think from what I've played of the new Mario game, I think most platformers I've seen would usually use kind of the middle method, though, where kind of when you're running, you can't just do an immediate snap back unless what they've added pivoting for extreme angles. Um, and, yeah, that's just something worth considering when you're scripting this. Uh, the example on the far right is a slightly more realistic kind of car motion I've added, so I've added an extra thing in this code where if you look at the two on the left now here, they can still pivot while the one in the middle has been set to um, turn by rotation. His rotation speed's not affected by how much movement there is, so he's still capable of pivoting on the spot, and that is actually both of these to be quite valid for a humanoid character in a platformer. The one on the far right is something which is only really seen on cars, where the amount he can actually rotate is also multiplied by his movements. So that's why when I turn slowly, he actually will only turn by the movement that's happening. I've also added a reversing feature, which automatically activates. So if you want to see how that works, you can look up code and mess around with that. I will still the one on the far right up to the top, because honestly it's the most fun as a car to move around the place. Okay. So... Yeah, I think that's all the real examples I've got there that I can think of. Um, if I think of anything more, I'm go I'm getting into the habit of doing more smaller videos now, one to two minute videos, just me talking about stuff during development. So if I think of anything else, I might just do another short update video later. But yeah, I'll be trying to get this project available online whenever I can. And yeah, just hopefully this just... For people starting out with this stuff, hopefully this just makes you think of, when you look at a tutorial for how to do a thing, just think a bit more than the first thing you see on uh, what's the best way for your game to make the player work, what's the best kind of, what's the best way to make the camera move, what's the best way to make the inputs um, acted onto the player, what's the best way for the player to be turning and moving about the place. Coding wise, all the codes commented here, it, it doesn't take too much change in how you actually script the characters, in fact with the 
car example, there's actually no real difference between how they're scripted. Um, so it's just worth thinking about. It doesn't take much to do these changes, but it's worth considering because it can really add a good feel of weight to your characters and make your game feel a bit more good for your genre. So yeah, hopefully that's helpful and good luck developing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>